Welcome back to the Mammy Show. This is your host, Rohit. Today we have Philip Podman, the serial entrepreneur and the CEO of Textrip. Thank you, Phil, for getting into the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Rohit. So we were just talking about a bunch of stuff regarding the success mindset and the entrepreneurship we have been discussed from last few days now. So first of all, like, would you like to just tell us something about yourself, like a little background of yours into entrepreneurship and how you got started? How old are you at this time when you started and so on, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I had tried the corporate route for years and I had success in it. Um, but at one point I was traveling, I was living out of a hotel and I had two little ones at home. Um, I was in my 20s, my late 20s, and I was uh, I was missing the moments for my newborn children. Um, you know, the first walk, the things like that that they were going on. And the only way up in the corporate world was going to be more traveling, more time away from my children and my family. And I said, this isn't a life I want to live. I, I want to be there for the moments in my my children's life. And so I remember walking out of my office with my box in my hand. I it was I left the job and I made a commitment to the world or the universe. And I said, this will be the last time that I ever work for somebody else again. And I believe that it was important to state that as fact, because later on, it got really tough. Um, I had started a restaurant delivery company. Mm -hmm. And there was times where it was not going well. And I was thinking to myself, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? You could go back and just get a normal job. It would be so much easier. You wouldn't have all the stress and the nonsense that you have with running your own company. But then I'd go back to that commitment that I made and said, no, you told yourself this will be the last time that you ever work for somebody else again. And that got me through through those difficult times. I'd say the the thing that is really tough with entrepreneurship in general is often just making that first step. Yeah. You know, it's really scary. You're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to lose the security of everything I have. But once you make that first step and you survive and yeah. you make it and you're doing it on your own with your own two hands, it changes things. So I uh, had built a, a restaurant delivery company. I ended up selling it to delivery.com. Um, took the tech side of my business and um, we grew that with uh, uh, multiple products. We do uh, mainly software as a service type products uh, with TechStrip, um, Argos Automation, X Browser, and some others. Um, and we're investing heavily right now in India, specifically in Ahmedabad. Uh, that's where our tech and our IT office is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're really growing out there and, and having some great growth. We just closed on a new office that we had built out there. And uh, we've got some great engineers and IT team out there right now. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I'm, I'm really excited about the future. And I've been uh, doing some podcasts as well. That's kind of a more of a, a personal passion of mine more than anything. And like, like so you've been into restaurant business. And now you are into the SaaS industry and you went into the software industry. This is what you went into. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And, and, you know, when I sold the company, the last company I had, I said, well, what am I going to do now? You know, I sold this company that I had spent years building. And <laughs> I was at a moment where I said, what am I going to do? What do I like doing? You know? Uh, and I, I think that's a, a place that a lot of us get to in life. You know, you get to a moment where maybe you're at a crossroads and you have to decide where do I want to go? What do I want to do? What's important? And so I, I wrote on a whiteboard. I started writing out things that I enjoyed, things that I wanted to do, where I wanted to take my journey. And I know it sounds a little goofy, but I said, I want to be an inventor, mm -hmm. right? I want to make things, not like thomas edison right i want to make like <laughs> a light bulb or something like that but i wanted to create things i love the process of yeah. finding a problem and then coming up with a solution for it and so i uh that's why software was was something i want to get into so i started learning programming and went that route and um and and then found some problems that existed in certain industries 
and we created a solution for it and uh, it took off and did very well. And so that's what I continue to do. And I'd say the greatest thing about what I do right now is I'm only doing things that are exciting to me. I'm only working on projects that are really passionate about and enjoy. Money is kind of a side, you know, side uh, benefit to it. I'm solving a problem, doing things I enjoy, and yes, also making money while doing it. Got it. And money making is the secondary thing, I guess, for me too. I never cared about the money, honestly. And I'm still not caring about the money. But what I'm focused on is like just building on the things, even though like working into this Web2 company, entering into the Web3, even the money rolls in itself, like when you do something for something really intrigue you know for the economy or for the people and it does that works out yeah you know absolutely and if, if you do something valuable yeah. something that is solving problems uh, the, the money will follow yeah. um obviously you don't want to give away that's a whole separate project you know uh, conversation when you're talking about people giving away what what they have but the money is typically a, a, a side. It's going to come if, you, if you're doing something right and you're solving problems for, you know, for what people have. According to you, what leads to success? Specifically? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a good question. So um, for me, this is my, my personal journey. And I, I always found it interesting that there were people that were far more educated than I was, yeah. uh, far more skilled sometimes in certain areas and they struggled to find success in life. Um, whereas I've had a variety of different things that I've done from real estate to, you know, a restaurant delivery company to SaaS. And I found success in these different areas. And so I started analyzing what are those, are there like specific things that are leading to success in my own journey? And then others that I know that I found, you know, success as well. And I think the, the first one is, is having a plan, having goals, having written goals. And let me say it again, having written goals, yeah. not goals in your head, but having actual written goals. Right? That works. That, 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 that seems as a prototype of something in written. Yeah. And the, the major reason why you need to have a written goal is, is you're, you're making it real in the world yeah. when you actually write it down. Yep. Right. Um, whereas thoughts in your head, they're still kind of up there. They're not solidified. And it's amazing how the brain will work towards achieving a goal if it's written down, because now it's concrete. Now it's down in paper. It's in the real world. You have to work towards it. Right. But the other part with having a written goal is, is having a map that you're working towards or guidelines. And if you think about life as being this, you know, you're in the middle of an ocean and you're floating around. Yeah. If you don't have a map and you're not uh, paddling your ship in a direction, you're just going with the ebbs and the flows like no or wherever the wind takes you. Yeah, you're going to end up wherever, right? Yeah. So it's important to have a goal, something you're working towards. Yeah. So that way, if the good, the bad happens, you're still on course for yeah. the direction that you're trying to achieve. Something that's important for me when I'm writing out goals is that I don't just incorporate business goals. I don't just incorporate financial goals. Those are obviously important, That's but nice. I also incorporate things like artistic goals, family goals, yeah. right? Uh, other goals that are going to help me be a well-balanced person. Yeah. And so I want to map out goals for those as well. And, and sometimes they'll align, right? Right. So I may have a family goal and an artistic goal, or maybe I want to travel more or something like that, but I want to travel with my family. Those are goals that can kind of coincide with each other um, as well. So um, it's important to, to be well balanced when you're looking at your goals. So goal setting is the first thing that I, that I always talk about with anybody. And then the second thing is habits. H having healthy habits is an incredibly yeah. important. And there's a book called Atomic Habits. If you haven't read it, I would really encourage you to do so. Um, it talks about habit stacking and building habits. But if you think about your life as being just a series of habits, things you do when you wake up in the morning, you drink a glass of water, or you go to the bathroom or you eat breakfast, you do the same thing day in, day out. Okay. Yeah. If you get home 
and you sit down and you're watching television or you're mindlessly scrolling through your Facebook feed or Instagram or something like that, or you get bored, you just decide to look on your phone and things like that. Those are habits that you're building. Okay. If you can shift those habits to something that's more productive, like, okay, uh, instead of this, I'm going to start going on a treadmill or I'm going to work out or I'm going to write for 10 minutes so I can start working on this book or I'm going to learn a new skill, right? For 10 minutes, right? Just, just little brief periods of time. If you can start building those as habits over time, those become really big things, yeah. right? That 10 minutes a day that you're doing reading very quickly turns into you're reading books very often, right? Yeah. And so the habits is the second thing. And then the last thing I would say is what I call arrogant confidence. And if you want to be successful in any endeavor, you have to have the confidence yeah. to do so, right? So if you're getting into something like a new business venture, right? You have that little voice in your head that's telling you, you can't do this. You're not skilled to do this, right? There's somebody way more qualified to do this than you are. And you have to have this almost arrogant level of confidence to push past that and say, no, I am going to do this, right? And and greatness comes as a result of it. So the three things I would look at is if, if you're going after any area in success is having a clearly defined goal, building healthy habits, and then developing almost an arrogant level of confidence. And what do you say about like the work-life balance of an entrepreneur? You know, is it like easy or is it like as usual as the normal guy or, you know, like as a work, like work guy into the job or is it something different for sure? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a couple of problems with being an entrepreneur, right? One is you don't have any set amount of hours. Okay. So you can end up working from sun up to sundown to staying up late. Nobody's managing your time, but you. And so if you don't have good time management skills, getting into an entrepreneur life, you can burn yourself out really fast. Yeah. The other thing is if you're like me and doing something you love, I'm sure you've heard the quote, find something you love to do and you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. The problem with that, though, is if you you could work every day, all day, but you need to break. You, even if it's something you love, even if it's your job, you love to do it. If you don't take breaks from it occasionally, you will burn yourself out. So when I was talking earlier about having clearly defined goals like family time, artistic time, it's also important to have leisure time. I'd say one of the most important things that I have as an entrepreneur is time where I do nothing. I do because do if I don't do yeah, and that's right. You all the ideas. I do think a lot. I think so much. Like I can not remember. I used to be sit idle on my shelf, and I was just like this. And even though, like all the projects which we have in this company in Dubai, and like we guys are like at this time, we guys are Dubai Private Limited in India. We guys are taking the Dubai Corporation in US and Florida, Miami at this time. Second thing, we guys just launched in three months back the Mami show, bringing the artworks in, bringing the new stuff in. Then I'm coming into the Web3 with new brand called Die Hard Friends with the new parent company holding these brands, it's DHF Coin and Gaming. All those things took too much time of thinking. Like, I just can't tell. And even though I'm still thinking from last three weeks what the company name should be, and I'm just reading the dictionaries, reading the books, and just coming with the names, playing with the stuff, and just still haven't got any. And I'm just yeah. thinking, you know. And then when you step away from it, you're not even thinking about it. And then your brain thinks of the idea, yeah. right? And that's why it's important to have a time where you're not doing anything. And I would find myself when I didn't budget time to do nothing, the only times where I was coming up with an idea were when I was in the shower or right before I was trying to go to sleep and all these ideas would flood my head and keep me from sleeping, right? So then, you know, so to go back to the work-life balance, it becomes prioritizing it and understanding that your leisure time, your lifetime, your family time are just as, if not more important than the work, you know, than the work functions and the things that you're doing for your business and some of the other areas. So I would say it comes down to scheduling it. Yeah. There's a, um, a big rocks theory. Have you ever heard of this? The big rocks theory? 
I think I don't. You heard of this? And if you if you search for it on Google, you'll find some information on it. But basically, imagine you have a jar mm -hmm. on your desk in front of you, and next to the jar you have some big rocks. They're like maybe uh, gravel sized, uh, maybe you know uh, this big or so, right? Um, and then you have some uh, smaller pebbles, and then yeah. you have some sand. Uh -huh. OK, you have to fit all of these things inside this jar. Right. Well, if you start with the sand, the sand will fill up a good portion of the jar and then the pebbles will go on top. And those bigger rocks will not fit in that jar. There's just not enough room. OK, but if you go the other way and you put the big rocks in there first, then you pour the little pebbles in there. They'll fill up in between the rocks yeah. and then the sands will fill up in between. OK, well, this is an analogy for for time management in life. Your big rocks are the important things that are going to move you forward. They could be things like learning new skills. They could be things like traveling with your family. They could be things like taking your spouse out to dinner. Right. Yeah. These are things that are important and they need to be scheduled. Yeah. So those things are the first things that I get put into my calendar. And I plug them in there. And then you have the pebbles, which are the things that are required for the day-to-day -day operations, right? They're the things that you have to do every day, running your business, calling customers, whatever that is. The sands, the sands are just the emergencies that come up and they come up all the time, right? The sands of the day are the things that fill in there. If you do not define the beginning part with those big rocks and tell them where they're going to go on your schedule, the sands of the day will fill up your schedule and you'll never have time to do those high priority items that are going to move you forward. So my advice for anyone that struggles with work ba life balance is to start your week, start your month, however you do your calendar, start with those and make sure you have them blocked off. If you make them a priority, don't reschedule them, then the sands of the day aren't going to get in the way of them. They're going to go around it. How much you schedule in the beginning? Like when you were getting started in your early 20s, how many hours you were working and now? And what's the difference? Yeah. Um, like you're saying, how many hours do I work versus how I used to? Yeah. Like earlier, when you were getting started, restaurant business or getting into entrepreneurship. Yeah, absolutely. So in the beginning, I worked a lot of hours. Absolutely. Um, you know, they say there's 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 uh, like three currencies, uh, uh, knowledge, time and money. Right. And when you're starting off, you don't have money and sometimes you don't have knowledge. So you substitute that with time. You put in the time yeah. Yeah. over time. If you're good, then you're learning the knowledge and you're getting the money. Yeah. So you use the knowledge and the money to buy back time. Yeah. Right. And so that's kind of been my journey as well. And early on, um, I was I was one of seven children. I you know grew up. Uh, we grew up very poor, and um, I didn't have parents that gave me money or anything like that. I had to do it all myself. So what's the only thing I have? I have my time. So that's what I invested in building and learning and growing and working and. If, if you're doing things right, you get to a point where you can buy back a lot of that time. And so now I, I do spend a lot of time, you know, enjoying myself. I'm here at the office. Uh, my wife will be here shortly. We're going to go out and get something to eat together, you know, in, in, in the middle of the day. Um, because that's, that's how I like to enjoy my time now. Yeah. And that's for sure important. For sure. I... Even though I have spent like somewhere like less than two, three years of mine, but not getting into this anymore. No friendships, no relationships, just getting over the business. And now I'm thinking to go on with the same, like when the lines are just going parallel, you know, let's say like just things are going up. Let me just get into something. Let me just get into something. Let me just get a new thing and go out. And yeah, it took time. It is taking time. And it's really like a, a lot of roller coaster, you know. On daily basis, every day. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And over time, that'll get better, but you have to manage it. Um, I'd say the things with time and money is if you don't tell your time where to go, 
if you don't tell your money where to go, it will disappear. Yeah. And that's a fact. You will never run into extra time or extra money or whatever. You have to tell them where to go if you want them. So if you want more time, you have to budget it. You have to tell it where to go. If you want more money, you have to budget it. You have to tell it where to go. And those are two facts of life. Amazing. Got it. What do you think, like, what's the secret sauce behind the success mindset? Like, what's the sauce behind it? Yeah, absolutely. Go. Just get going is the, I'd say, the, the success mindset. So many people spend time just thinking about an idea or thinking about a business or planning or, you know, oh, I got this idea, this thing I want to work on and stuff. Oh, I, it's, it's not ready yet. I'm still working on it. I'm still building this idea and stuff like that. But how many great corporations do you know of that started off yeah. in a garage, right? And big one. If you look at big one we use every day, Apple. For sure. Apple. Perfect example. Do you did you ever see? Uh, if if you get a chance, Google this. Look at an image of the first Apple computer. I never have seen that. I have seen even the, even the movies of all like Jobs and Steve Jobs. I have watched out everything. For sure. Yeah, and that and you look at it, and this thing is like strung together with wires, and it looks terrible. You yeah. know, it's like in a wooden box. Amazon, Amazon was also the one of the best example. There was just like a big small board of written Amazon with a big pain, amazon.com. And it took, it, it was like Jeff was like, at that point of like four, six years when he was managing his own site on daily basis when I was watching his interview. So like every day you just manage the, like, like manage the entire website at the end, it just orders the product, like ship the orders and so on. So that's the whole process related to just from a small yeah. group. You got to you have to start somewhere yeah. and people will look at it and say, what are you doing? This thing looks, this is not a product or this is not a real service or you don't know about this. And it looks very homemade, I would say in the beginning, but that's where we all start. Yeah. We all start there, you know, and you'll start there. And then all of a sudden, a few months later, a year later, People will look at what you have and go, oh, my God, how did you do this? This is incredible. Yeah. Well, they don't understand. It started back with that, you know, the wires all over and the cardboard yeah. box and the handwritten name on there and no logo. And it started with all of that. But the difference between you and the people that were unsuccessful yeah. is you decided to start moving forward. You put yeah. one foot in front of the other. And, and, and started moving forward. And that, to me, success has to start with that. There are far more successful people that move forward than pe there could be smartest person in the world. But if they don't take the first step, they're never going to never gonna find success in life. So if, if you're listening to this and you're thinking about an idea or you're thinking about doing something, maybe it's writing a book, maybe it's just working out. Maybe it's spending more time with your kids. My advice would be just start doing it. Take yeah. the step forward, right? Just do it. I'd say people say all the time, oh, I don't have time to work out, right? I don't have time for exercising and staying yeah. fit. You can't find five minutes in your day, yeah. 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes maybe. The, the point is, yes, you can. You can put 10 minutes a day in there. And I would say 10 minutes a day just to build a habit is far more important than not doing it at all, right? Because you're building that habit and you start doing that thing. So whatever it is that you're looking at, you're thinking about doing action, 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 action is more important than any, any idea you have in the world. Yeah. I have people come up to me all the time and they go, hey, Phil, I got the next million dollar idea, right? I got this app idea, right? I got this <laughs> website idea. Da, 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 da. The idea is nothing. Yeah, it's the, it's the implementation of it. It's the work around it. Yeah. yeah, I got all kinds of ideas in my head. But until I actually start doing it and start moving forward, that's where the value comes from is the effort. So action, action, action. For sure. Execution seems the best. For sure. And it's like one drop can obviously make the whole ocean full of water. Yeah. You got it. Yes. Um, you if, if you look at success, success is really about compounding, right? 
Yeah. It, it is. It's consistently building, 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 and growing and growing. Focus. You look at some of the greatest investors in the world, and they just had a long history of successful investments, right? Yeah. There was no big spikes up. They didn't win the lottery one yeah. day. And actually, look the other way. To even the we guys and these guys don't even believe in lottery, for sure. Yeah, but people that win money fast or they come across there, maybe it's an inheritance, right? They they get money really quickly. They often lose it just as, as fast as they got it, right? You see it all the time, like a, a billionaire, millionaire family. And then the, the person that made the company passes on and they leave it to their family. And then within one or two generations, the money is gone, right? They think, you know, how is that how is that possible or whatever you know what what happened and stuff and um and and and, and so these are things that we all need to look at and and make sure that we keep in the top of our head is that having those having that wealth mindset so amazing thanks well, Phil. i think that's amazing for sharing these bunch of insights i guess that's for the show for today you know we we'll love it's like the audience would love to hear the success mindset or for sure, like the things behind it. Uh, into entrepreneurship, getting into, getting succeed, and uh, even getting started, you know, feeling done yes. and getting started. Well, absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for having me, Rohit. Yeah, thanks for being on the show, Phil. Yep.